pretty much the outline how it's gonna go. I brought the wrong book though. Damn. I hate when I do this shit. Nightowlhiphop.com. Yeah. Holy smokes, I'm no joke out the bullpen. Bringing nothing but heat, leave you hanging like clothespins. He's a beast when he goes in. Ice cold frozen. The first round draft pick, number one chosen. Drop bombs, explosion, self promotion. And I keep shit moving like a flanker in motion. I'm the number one spokesman, is my devotion. That I'm dedicated to the rhyme, is my own notion. Brown water's the potion, it put hair on your chest. Or you can put one in the urn, it'll put you to rest. Sweet dreams. I'm about to fade, I got my mind on my money and I'm dreaming about getting the all paid Mr. Go-Getter, Mr. Assertive, Mr. Initiative, Mr. Results, man, I'm all about my business, kid Damn, I mean, need I say more? I mean, what more can I say? You know the play, uh, back for the last time, this time I mean that I did a lot of shows, but you ain't never seen that I did a lot of battles, I ain't even have to win it with the song, they ain't even try to spin it. I took a lot of pictures. What the fuck? I ain't in it. But when I hit the mic, I crash. Y'all did it. I did a lot of promo, did a lot of interviews. Y'all getting hated on a lot of been accused. What else? Misunderstood and ridiculed. What else? Acting like I ain't never been to school. Shit. How soon they forget I stood the test of time. Rewind that shit. Yeah. Best is, yeah. City in the back in the sun, rooftop in the diamond in the hat. Hey, videos with the city in the back in the sun, rooftop in the diamond in the hat. I'm back, bitch. I'm back. I'm back, yeah. I'm back, bitch. I'm back. I'm back, yeah. Gon' do it then. Gon' do it then. Do it then. Gon' do it then. Gon' do it then. Do it, do it then. Move with it. Move with it. Move with it. Gon' it. Move with it. Gon' it. Move with it. Out of breath. Got a little bit more left. Yeah. I got more drift than a little bit. I'm sunshine with the punchlines. I take jabs at five oh, throw up a cut to the one. Mic check, mic check, mic check. One, two, three. What's up, TS? What's up, Boogs? Bro, you know, bro, it's a long fucking week, brother. We got a long day ahead of us today. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I'm excited. I'm hyped. I'm kind of, kind of, bro. Because so, so before we get into the topic today, me and Boo's got a long fucking weekend ahead of us. Today, we got a wedding of a of a of a friend of ours who we joined the same fraternity in. A frat brother. So, his wedding is later today at 5 p.m. our time, and I think it goes until 11, bro. And we're old, bro. We're, again, we're old again. I'm gonna tell you right now, we're old. No, we're, we're 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 fucking old. And then the day after, we got Boogs' uh, like two. How do I say this? I wasn't say terrible. Two, you know, terrible two birthday. I was, I was a terrible two birthday. <laughs> so I. So that's that's back to back. But the, you know the thing for me is is that I'm off Monday Tuesdays, so. Every week, I'm off Monday through this. Bro, so I'll be definitely sleeping in, you know? So, yeah. And if we're up right now at 7.30, I mean, it would be nice to sleep in a little bit, but at the end of the day, who gives a fuck, bro? You know what I'm saying? No, actually... No, it's not. It's it has, it's not bad at all, bro. I'm actually uh, it's actually nice once in a while. You know what I'm saying? Like to uh, to hang out with you in the morning, and then and for us to you know shoot our shit and do our thing every morning. Robert, what's up, buddy? Oh wait, Robert, what's up? TS, what's up? I just want to say what's up to you guys. Thank you guys for coming through our to our channel, um, for the all bad show. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, but it's it's ne it's never bad for to get up this early, bro. I mean, at first. It was rough. That, I mean, but a lot of people like, what's up, Lambo? Like, 7 in the morning, you wake up, and you're like, okay, I could be sleeping right now. 
No? But at the end of the day? Wait, they can't hear you? Hold on. Hold on. Say something now, Boogs? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Robert Lambo, TS, good? Am yeah. I good now? He's good now. He should be good. You know what I'm saying? There you oh. go. There you oh, go. What's up, buddy? Um, um, Let me talk to the editor. Hey, can you make sure that Boogs' audio is good? All right, can you move him up a little bit? All right. The editor, uh, we have a production person. <laughs> it was me, guys. It was my bad. <laughs> the fuck? I was like, who are you talking to? <laughs> I was like, did the wife go to work? She's helping oh. you out or what? Oh, uh, bro. So, <laughs> hey, guys, thanks for the audio fix up. Claw, what's up, buddy? So, again, if you guys are, are, are new here, this is the all bad show. Boogs and I are best friends from over, fuck, uh, 15 years, 16 years? Did we cross into our fraternity 16 years ago? That's a long time, bro. That's a lot, bro. I just realized how fucking old I am by just saying that. Yeah, you're pretty old. <laughs> so I, I, bro, but but you're older than me, asshole. Stop it. So I by like two months. Yeah, relax, you're still relax. older than me. You're still older than me. <laughs> but it's crazy because I think we're almost at twenty years of friendship. I think yo, yeah. Cause we graduated. We graduated with oh four. Yeah. Delta started 04, yeah. 04 is when we met. Yeah. That were Dang, old. 19 years. Dang. <laughs> Did that half? That's like half of our life. That, that, that's, a, that's insane. Yeah, that is almost half our life. Yeah. Wait, no, wait. No, that's half. We're at half, for sure. Because we were around 19, 20 years old. Yeah. Were you at my 20? I graduated young. Did you? Oh, God. Oh, I, I, see, I see what you're saying. Wait, 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 were you at my 21st birthday party, like at my cousin's house? Like we threw a tr crazy party before we did expo? Was that when the fight broke out? Was there a fight in that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what was weird is that I started talking to this girl like when I was single, and she was, I think she referenced that party. She was like, yeah, you were, you were at Ben's party, and the fight broke out outside of the garage. Yeah, and yeah, And I was yeah. like, how do you know me? Like, it was the first time I ever took her out, and she, like, she brought that out, and I was so creeped out. Like, I was like, that's weird. <laughs> that's awkward. <laughs> uh, Lambo just said, come on, y'all, y'all young. Neither of you were alive when I graduated high school. Lambo is an OG, brother. I am, uh, he's an OG, though. He's he comes, a, with, the, he comes with the real facts. You, you he know, comes with the real facts. You know why his, his name is Lambo? Because he pushes a Lambo? No, bro. Let's, let's Lambo uh -oh. eat it. But... <laughs> Yeah, he's a he's a Packers fan. He's a oh Lambo Stadium. Yeah, bro. Um, he's a cheesehead. Is that right? Is that oh, the cheesehead, right? Yeah, the cheeseheads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, go pack, go. You know what I'm saying? Go pack, go. For for the I people know. in this uh, community, Lambo is a, a fellow concert creator, uh, but he does Rise of Kingdom. So make sure to check out his channel. His name is Justice. Has his channel spelled out. So make sure to check him out. Um. But yeah, man, let's get into the topic, brother. So I, I, think, I think this topic, to me, is actually a really interesting topic. And I, and, and I don't know. I, obviously, fraternities are national in the U.S., right? But are they internationally, too? They have to have organizations across, like, in Europe and Asia, right? They have to be. Right? Does anybody know that? Like, T.S., Robert, a a anybody know if fraternities are actually... And, or sororities are internationally as well, or is it just a U.S. thing? This is probably, I should have done some research here, but I assume they are international. Does anybody know? I'm going to Google that real quick. Bro. Is, oh, I blocked your face. There you go. <laughs> is there fraternity there in Europe? Why just Europe? Why not everywhere? Oh, shoot, bro. You will not find any fraternities nor sororities. 
What, in they, Europe? Yeah, but th they're called student nations, maybe, like in Sweden and Finland. But not, there's no sororities for uh, fraternities. Finland? Say it again. Finland? <laughs> they are prominent in Canada and the Philippines and exist in smaller capacity in countries such as Poland, Germany, and Italy. Oh, that's crazy. Hey, Lady Bonfire. Ask a. I, I'm just. That's, that's crazy. They're, it's only a U.S. thing. The U.S. has so many crazy. different things in the other countries. I don't know. Maybe that's what you... we suck. Well, I was going to say, we're kind of stupid sometimes, bro. That's probably why. Yeah. I, I agree. Any excuse to drink. I've, again, I'm grateful to live here, whatever, but like when I go to other countries, they're like, oh, you're American. Uh. I'm like, like excuse yeah. me, what? Like, what does that mean? Oh, yeah. You, yeah. you, you suck. You, 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 know, you, like, you know what it means. I'm like, no, I don't know what it means. Like, you, you know what it means, sir. You know. That's messed up. I'm like, oh, okay. I, yeah. The, the only place that you feel good is like if you go to the Philippines. Like when I went to the Philippines, it was always, hello, ma'am, sir. But like in their head, they're probably like, I hate these motherfucking people. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, I think the Philippines, the only reason why they are so nice to me is like, oh, I get this guy to marry me and go to the States for free. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my like, God. That is so true. There was a stripper out there. I was at a strip club and she. In the Philippines? Was, in the Philippines, bro. Some of my auntie out there ended up randomly owning a strip club. I don't know if it was random, wait, wait, but auntie owns first, a strip first time I met her, I had no. It was crazy. <laughs> she goes, "Oh, it was just, crazy. Come, just come by to our, my my business, and then she, I'm not, she, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not come come over to my uh, to my my club. I I have a club out here. I was, I was like 18, and freaking. Do you remember Rush Hour Two? Do you remember that movie Rush wait, Hour wait, Two? Wait, where wait, like, were they they stand in a line? You pick one. Yes, <laughs> like the curtains opened up. I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> it was pretty cool. Wait, 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 wait. How, how many? How many? Like, how, okay, sorry, I know, I know, we have a topic today. I just need to know. I need the community needs to know. You know, um, I need, I need to know. Like, so just like, how many are like you just literally stand in line? You're, they're standing in a line. You just pick, hey, pick one or two, whatever. There's like layers. There, there was like stages, bro. <laughs> Well, this lobby like a, said, what, what club is this? Let me support. Bro, you have to support. I'm going to get the name of it. I can't remember, bro. That was like is it in 20 Manila? years ago. No, it's in Cebu. It's in Cebu, Bung. Okay. It's in Cebu. It's in Cebu. And you know what? What I learned is that like the strip clubs, they um, they actually import the girls from like all over the Philippines. What is this? Commissary? What the fuck? It's, it's weird, bro. Like none of the strippers that were there were from Cebu. They were all like from different parts of the Philippines and they stayed in the hotel in the back and they work for like, they work for like a week and then they go home. Like, it's pretty sick. But I, I, I'm, just, I'm just mind blown. So I, let's say I walk into, the, I walk into this club, right? Me, whatever. And then they yeah. go, oh, hi, welcome, blah, blah, blah. And then they go, oh, okay, yeah. come in this room, whatever, I'm assuming, right? Come in this room. No, 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 not like that, not like that. So it's like when you walk in, it's like a regular strip club, right? Like a pole, somebody's dancing, there are a bunch of chairs everywhere. And so obviously my auntie worked there, right? So we got there and um, they're like, what are you guys trying to, what are you trying to do? And I was like, I don't know. Like I've never been to a place where my auntie owned the strip club. I'm like what the, what the fuck happens here? And um, she, <laughs> she was like, let me take you guys to the back. So we went to the back room. And then you just, I hear like a bunch of cat calls. It was like, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, like something like hella random. And fucking, um, I guess that's how like all the girls started to line up. And then they just pulled the curtains back. We're in this empty room. They just pulled the curtains back. And I was like, oh. Just, like, like 20? Like, We're from like 2010? Like five people only? Like There was like 40 chicks, bro. There was like 40 chicks just like staggered. It was like 10, 10, 10. Like it was. It was weird. I, I I couldn't I couldn't catch everybody. I had to like keep I I kept scanning like the room to get like the baddest one. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, in terms of quality, ten being the highest, one being worst. Give me an average of what we were seeing up there. Um, I'm thinking for like you. I'm thinking it was like at least an eight. It was like an eight or eight or nine. There was a bunch of eight and nines if I can really? remember correctly. But you have to remember, but they were imported. They were imported. I they mean, weren't. I, they weren't like totally local. Totally fine. That's totally fine. But so these were quality. No, oh, yeah, they were quality. It was fun. And what's hella funny is that this the, <laughs> this fucking strip club. So my auntie asked, like, do you guys want to stay on the general floor? Or you guys want to go to a room? And I was like, the room. Shit, the the room. Hello, like auntie. What the hell? Are you trying to set me up? And uh, 
We get to the room, and there's a fucking karaoke machine in the room. <laughs> and you guys, it's just, and you guys, there's a table. <laughs> there's like a table in the middle, and then like it was like a smaller room, and then there was like a three like couches on you know three sides of the room, and then uh, the projector screen came down, hella slow. And it was a fucking karaoke machine. I thought it was hilarious. So you were doing karaoke, having drinks, and and, ha- and hanging out with people in that room. I mean, I was I wasn't singing karaoke, but yeah, <laughs> I was busy. So, so and and you and you can, you know, you can, uh, you, how... you can tip for is it U.S. dollars? You tip in pesos. Oh, I converted. I converted everything. I didn't keep any American cash when I got there. So you get like one peso, so, which is like one cent, or like like. I don't know. No, you can't give them one cent, bro. They're coins. You can put coins in their in their crotch, bro. Like you had to get the higher ones. I think it was like ten is like the smallest or something. I don't remember what it was, but but, but the conversion rate. I had, rate I had is... paper bills. Oh, interesting. Yeah, interesting. I think I was passing out hundred. There were like hundreds or two hundred pesos. Which like, is what bill. in the U.S.? Which is what in the U.S.? Like, I don't know, like a dollar something. Robert, I'll get you the name. I swear yeah, to God, I'll yeah, find the got, name. Yeah. yeah, you know what? You got to be careful. So I remember, I remember her name. Well, it's probably her fake name, right? But it was like Chastity or something like that. Yeah, it's fake. And obviously, yes, yeah, super fake. But um, so when I got to the Philippines, I had a, I had a fake, not a fake phone, but a Filipino number, right? So my mom and dad could call me and shit. And she was like, "Oh, do you have a phone?" And this girl would not stop texting me calling me like the whole two weeks i was there and she was just like oh you're gonna come back you're gonna take me home with you that's why that's what brought it up right they asking to, to come home with us you're gonna give me a green card like let me let me live with you oh it's my like, god <laughs> oh so they were like this i'm gonna make this my little 90 day fiance i don't care like i'm making this oh yeah. oh yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah, i can for see sure. why sure. it works a lot on a lot of tourists for sure, because like, oh my god, oh, yeah. this girl overseas, she's into me. She's like, I'm trying to get this fucking green card. <laughs> and it probably works half the time, or probably have they have to half of them get pregnant. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. <laughs> Man, that is crazy. Yeah. It's gonna go one way or the other. Hey, Bo Burritos, thank you for subscribing, brother. We appreciate it very much, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Chad. Strippers in the subscribe. morning with coffee. Yes, you guys are welcome for that. So, Chad, I know we kind of went off topic here. Um, super off topic. Uh, off topic and we could definitely share that for we could probably provide that in another topic what what <laughs> boogs just provided but um but yeah so <laughs> the topic that we want to talk about was joining a fraternity or a sorority i think we can say both and um for those who are not living in the u.s a f- i don't even know how to explain this educated bro basically me and boogs joined fraternity in college um six Fuck, six, 16, 16 years ago. 16 uh, years ago. 16 years ago. And the topic today is more like if you live in the U.S., you're about to go to university or you went to university and you did, you rushed for it, which means applied for it or got initiated into it, you know, was it worth it for you guys? And I think it'd be kind of cool to share our experiences and then give you our input if it was worth it or would have been fine without it. Um, so let me let me let me kind of walk you guys through how me and Boogs kind of started this journey together, um, and what went into it. So, so, uh, so I'm, I'm a, you can add whatever you you think you need to add. In of things, course, Boogs. But like basically, me and Boogs went to college together. We went to community college at first, and then we both transferred to a Sacramento University, um, which is a capital in California. It's capital, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay capital, stay capital, stay capital. So we were walking one day, me and him, like you know, like for like first week of school, we're walking down like the, we were walking like I forgot like the, so it's it's an area where all the sororities and fraternities are like rush promoting like hey come join us come join us whatever. So I I remember I was wearing Jordan sixes the DMPs and then you were wearing like some Jordans also and which is it was me you and I believe your girl at the time we were walking down. Like oh, yeah, preparing to go yeah. to school, and then these freaking four guys came up to us like, "Hey, what's up, man?" And he gets me goes, "Hey, I like your shoes." And they said something to you, I forgot what it was, but they were chopping it up with us. And me and me and Boogs were we're, were really social. Like we didn't we didn't like we weren't missing like a social aspect uh, in things in our lives. Like you know, we we were kind of set on who we were, and 
and we kind of like you know we were having fun no matter what we weren't kind of like loners or anything i'm not saying that it's for loners but it's more like you know we weren't like we weren't looking for an org right and then they came up yeah. to us and they were super cool and they were chopping up for us we're like oh shit hey do you want to come to our event this today like they gave us like a flyer there was like they had socials on there with like different sororities and then they have like all these other events of like games and like dinners and like, whatever it was so we're like I was like, I don't know. Like, we were talking about it. And we were kind of like, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. And I think us three had like a meeting. Like, should we do it? And then your girl hella promoted it. It was like, yeah, you guys should try it. You guys should do it. And, <laughs> and I, I remember that. And we went to the events, and I felt like we hella clicked with the people. And did we go? We, I don't remember going to the event. We did. I, I we, we went to the social because. Oh, no, 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 right, no, no, so no, no, maybe, no, 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 hold on. No, no, wait, wait, wait. So bad, wait, You're wait. like cookie cuttering it, bro. So we are, right, hold on, real wait, wait, story, wait. right? I invited that, into my this... house to a party and do hookah. Yes, that's what happened. We didn't go to any of their fucking events, bro. Until, we fucking, yeah. We started, we started throwing shit and we were like, hey, no, we don't want to go to your shit. You guys want to come through and slide by our apartment and come through and hang out with us? They came to us, remember that? Yeah. They, they were at your, we had, we had, we, we had a sorority come to our house, my house. My apartment, and then we had ex the charity come. It was like a couple girls from the sorority. Yeah. No, no, no. They brought the that, girls. Was that that was, that was when we dropped the hookah troll, uh, hookah coal on your carpet, right? Yes. And we we burned your, we burned the shit out of your carpet. Yes. <laughs> that was my bad. I'm really bad at shit like that. I'm not coordinated. Yeah, you it, shouldn't trust no, me when I'm drinking. Oh yeah, it was you. <laughs> it was you who dropped the hookah. Huh? Yeah, I said, did. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's past. No, time. so. The way I remember it, like we started, we didn't go to any of the events. We started having events at our place. And then everybody knows in the chat who, who's been following our channel for, for a little, or not our channel, but these uh, our episodes. We both worked at Applebee's. Um, and that was our job. Like when we transferred from Stockton to SAC, we, we got jobs at Applebee's. And we started hanging out. And one one of the bros showed up. At, at your apartment, and and we say bros we being member fraternity. That's what we mean, guys. By the way, and we looked at him and we're like, "Hey, you 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 work at Applebee's with us? Remember Rod. that? It was, either, it was Rod. Rod. It was Rod. So and we were like, bro, you're at Applebee's with us, and whatever happens that night, we didn't even bring it up. The next day, we both go to work, and fucking like four or five of them worked there. Yeah, right? it was two eight. It was two eighteen. It was a uh, Sal, it was uh, it was Rod, and Jeff. Jeff was a food runner, and we're like, "What the fuck? Like, you guys oh, are all over the place!" My God. <laughs> and then they told us our coworkers told us, "Hey, go to the info night." And then when we we both went to the, the info night was the only thing I remember going to. I mean, I don't remember going. Oh, but to you're right. We event. didn't go to any of their events. We just went to the info night. You're right. You're right. Because all the events yeah. that we were talking about, they came over to our spot. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it was different. It, it, yeah, and and again, I kind of want to backtrack because again, we didn't. I feel like we didn't need to join, but I think the reason why we went to the info night was to check it out and and just kind of see. Um, but it definitely that should open up my eyes though, like joining a fraternity. Yeah. Um, so we so go so basically, guys, we we did we we said you know what, fuck it, these guys are cool, let's give it a shot. And I would I would only do it if he did it. I think it was vice versa. And I think your girl did it too because we did it. Um yeah. and her sorority. And um how do I how do I want to start this? Like the whole process. Uh, I wanna on on I wanna I wanna start it off by asking like legitimate. Now, obviously that was in 07, right? So that's six, so sixteen years later, when when we sat down and we're like, yo, are you gonna do it? Yeah, are you gonna do it? Yeah. What did you think was gonna happen? Like, did you think like I, I know what I thought? I know what I thought. Obviously, I was I was completely wrong. But before I share what I thought, like, what did you think would happen? I like, honestly how thought did you get I it? honestly thought it would be like a I I I didn't think what we had to go into was what we would do. I thought we were like you know like initiation something, then I'll like pay some dues or whatever, and then we we were in you know what i'm saying like i i didn't think it'll be fucking what we thought for for the first part bro uh, for real like, oh that's hella funny um uh, i was like oh shit i gotta buy what and me and me and you mean you had money like again not money money we had jobs you know what i'm saying so we had we money had and you have to remember though like 
when me a lot of college Boogs kids don't, don't have money. money right so when me yeah. and Boogs started like started the initiation process for the fraternity there was like 16 of us or 14 of us together who started together it was around there it was pretty big well, yeah, 90, yeah that was a lot 90 percent of these people were broke as fuck and then you had to yeah. like buy stuff like for the process like of your own pocket uh which 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 if i think about it now it's not a whole lot but for a college kid it's a lot because yeah. like, we had to like buy we had to buy outfits we had to buy like certain goods and um, but the thing is, our fraternity we were lucky that our fraternity didn't have really any like annual dues because I know there's some fraternities who pay like thousands of dollars every month or every year or something like that. We yeah. owed like fifty bucks or something like that a year or something, and we don't think we have those paid. And we got the fundraiser. And and we, we, used we, have yeah, and we can use the fundraiser. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, we didn't think of what it was <laughs> in the beginning. And again, I promise you guys, at the end we'll tell you guys if it was worth it or not. But we we sort of share our experiences first. But um. Do you, do you, did you ever watch Saved by the Bell? Saved by the Bell, the college years? Do you remember that show? Hella no. old school show no. to show how old I am. So, like, in, in that show, did anyone in the chat, did you used you to watch Saved by the Bell? Or am I the only old motherfucker who just watched TV all the I, time? I, I have a feeling but, Lambo has seen the show. I, I feel like Lambo has seen the show. I'm not saying that he's old. I just think he's Snow, seen the show. Snow seen it. So there's an Snow episode Snow. of Saved by the Bell, the college years, and uh, they're trying to join a frat, and it was just all party. Right, it was like party, 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 and then if they liked you, they uh they pulled you, they pulled you out, they pulled like Zach and Slater out into the hallway, and they dumped like a bucket of slime on them, and they're like, ah, you're in. <laughs> I was like, shit. So when we're we're going through like the info <laughs> night, and we're talking to all these all these like older older frat brothers, and like, I was like, well, when are they gonna bring out the slime? Like, <laughs> oh, that's what you were thinking. Like, what are they gonna initiate me in right now? I was like, cool, let's go get this shit. Like, <laughs> like, all right, cool, we can do this tonight. Like, that's fine. <laughs> it yeah. was just well, like, it, well, it wasn't that. It wasn't one night. It was like fucking. Can I, it I, was a I while, don't bro. remember how many days did we go through the process. It was too many. Bro. It was like six months, right? Yeah, it was a long time. Yeah, it was we, a long time, guys. It took us six months to get into this fraternity. Six fucking months. And I'm, I'm not saying we're just, it wasn't like a waiting period. Like we had to go through shit for six months. And yeah. I'm not going to say. We were pledges. We were yeah, pledges we, for we, six months. we pledged for six months. Like people were finishing their, and other orgs were finishing. I'm like, we're still fucking doing this. And like, what the fuck? This is stupid. <laughs> we, we, so we started with 14 and we ended with six people. So six. eight people left. Like they couldn't handle it for, for whatever reason, personal reasons or whatever. But, to go into the question you guys were thinking, did we get hazed? And I, it, is hate, I'm not going to say the org, obviously, but are we, did we get hazed? I felt like it was mostly workouts. I mean, there were some things kind of like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like, I don't like using that word. And I don't know if it's because I'm, if I'm biased, I might be biased. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like it was. Um, I just I, feel I don't like. I feel like it was either. Like, I feel like it was more workouts than anything. I think, I think, honestly, like looking back, and obviously you and I ran like a bunch of processes for other people coming into it. Yeah. Um, I think pledging, pledging was more like of a mental fuck than oh, 100%. anything. Hundred percent. Like it was just like you start like opening up, you start like talking about shit that you're not really used to talking to, especially as like. Again, the age range that we're talking about, guys, is like eighteen to twenty-one. Like that's how old the the pledges yeah. were. Me and me and uh, Red were twenty-one when we pledged. Yeah. And so it was just like a, it's like a different. Like they really our our organization. Again, I can't speak for all the other organizations yeah. out there, uh, but our organization, it was it was more about like trying to find out like who you really were, and and then just like testing you, like testing like how bad you wanted it, and. Yep. Finding out the finding out the reasons why you're here, and it was it was a big it was a big mind fuck, bro. It was a lot. I got really good at mind fucking people, by the way. Oh yeah, you you're, you're really good about. It. You're mean. <laughs> you're mean. mean. I remember. I remember. I'm. Um, okay, I'm not gonna say his last name, but remember Tyler. Uh, you were. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah you were mean. I, I feel bad. I wish that guy crossed for some reason now, because I feel bad for that guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whenever anybody wanted like one of the pledges to like drop, they're just like. Leave him with leave him with books. Leave him with books for like an hour and he'll he'll turn in his shit. I was fucking ruthless, bro. 
Dude, it, so, you know, you made a really good point. Like, to me, because I've seen so many stories of like other orgs, like, in hazing and stuff like that, making them do dumb shit, like, you know, running around naked or, you know, doing all these things. Like, it wasn't like that for us. Like, I felt like every process in our org had, like, some sort of, like, purpose meaning about, like, like, we had to clean houses. Um, We had to... We had to carry around shit. Like, I don't know. It was crazy. And you know what? When I was cleaning a house one time, they told me, like, yeah, can you clean this house? Whatever. And we cleaned the houses. And I was like, why are you fucking cleaning houses? And then, you know, so again, our org was a cultural org. So basically, their goal was to kind of instill, like, the cultural aspects of it. Again, me and and Boogs are Filipino. So the org was a Filipino-based fraternity. And, like, they were teaching us, like, you know, the reason why you guys clean houses is that, Back in like the early days when the Filipinos started migrating to uh, to the U.S., the, the majority of the job they do was housekeepers. So they yeah. were teaching us like the hardships of what our ancestors did, you know, when they came to the U.S. of cleaning houses, doing hard labor, and just making us understand like that effort they put into to get to where they're at today. So like a lot of things that we did, like attributed to our Filipino heritage, like dude, we learned the Filipino national anthem. Like in the do you still remember history. it? Yeah. Don't lie. Do you still remember it? Bye, young. Wait. Bye, young. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you. All along the road. So, I'm going to give Yeah, I remember, bro. <laughs> and then we, but we, learned, I, we learned a whole lot, man. Like, like, like truly. Like, I we learned did. a whole lot. Like, I learned a lot. I thought, I thought it was really cool, like, like looking back on it. And then when we got when we got responsible for the process, right? Like, when we took over, when we were in the frat, and we took over for other people. I think something that I know you and I really like stressed on was like always like letting them know the purpose of shit. Yeah. There were times when when we were going through it and we're just like, what the fuck are we doing? This is fucking stupid. Yeah. But there was always supposed to be like a hidden meaning to it. It wasn't like just fucking pointless shit. You know what I mean? And so I thought that was really cool, specifically to our process and our fraternity. Like it was always a lesson involved. There was some. There were some bros out that went overboard. Oh, 100%. Sure. 100%. For sure. When you got 21 year olds pledging, name, you know, kids, it's kind of rough. First name Sam. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Fucking hated that motherfucker. Hey, did I, I? Was was it me who ate the pepper and like choked? Was he? Yeah. Jeez. He just turned hella red. That was bad. Yeah. Yeah, that was a bad day. But. But, but to to Boog's point, like everything that we did, what had I mean, like I learned about the Katipunan, I learned about like the you know the struggles of the Filipinos here in, in the U.S. Um, going up, yeah. it taught me a whole lot in, 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 about my heritage and, and made me really grateful, you know, to be Filipino, like being in that um, organization. And we even supported the the World War II veterans. Uh, oh yeah, uh, um, of World War II for uh, the Filipino uh, soldiers. So like it it was really it's really cool to be a part of. Um, oh, Mitmit with a real question. Does joining a frat save a lot of money? Fuck no. I mean, that depends. I think it really depends on like on like what kind of frat you're in. Cause yeah. obviously once you once you get in, so once you once you're in Greek, you you get welcomed into Greek life. Yeah. Right. So Greek life pretty isn't lit, just though. your Yeah, it's pretty lit. But it's not just your fraternity. Like for us, us being social like before, we used to like our fraternity used to like have beef with other frats like all the time and they would like literally like fight and i didn't want to do that shit you know what i'm saying like i was just trying to kick it <laughs> I, I was trying to kick it. i was trying to have as many friends as possible so we actually were able to like tear down some some walls that were up with other orgs um we were we were a cultural fraternity but there was like there was like white people fraternities mexican fraternities like black fraternities and we i wanted to hang out with everybody i thought it was really cool like once you're greek you're greek like you, you earned your letters and that was like a big thing, like at a college that we were at, Sac State. It was big because like they know what your letters represent. They know like everyone who's a Greek knows what you went through um, in some type of way, shape, or form that you had to go through and struggle through a process to get your letters. And like the connections that you get, Mitt Mitt, like oh, it's yeah. not just within not just within your frat. Like other frats will start hooking you up. Like again, it just all depends on how cool you are and how you utilize it yourself. Yeah. But um, I know I, me, me and Red personally, we made a bunch of connections outside of our frat that helped us out. Um, job wise, I know Red, he didn't get his job unless he was in the frat. Yep. Uh, that's very so, true. That is very true. Um, it's crazy. 
Crazy. Yeah, like, and I met my wife through the through the frat. I think you met your wife through the frat too, like over time, right? Like the fr- I, right, like did she know? No, she just, she just... oh, Mitt, Mitt's coming to college in California. Oh, bro. what? what college? Mitt, Mitt, what college? Let's go. What college? Do you know? Do you know where you're going at? Oh, dude, yeah, he, he got to tell us, bro, because I want to know our frat. <laughs> I want to know our frat is in Cali. You see, you you see our Riverside. 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 Oh, we don't have a. Yeah, we got River. We have River. No, we don't. Do we? No, oh. we have no, Pomona know. in San Diego. Ooh. There's Irvine. We have uh, UC Irvine. We have UCs on there, bro. They might be. We might be in Riverside. Oh, well, it's been 16 years, so I don't fucking remember. <laughs> it's been a while, doc. It's been a while, but, bro. It's but while. our advice to you, Mimit. Is that just go to? You can go to the events that they uh, throw for us and kind of see. Yeah, at the end of the day, the what makes the org fit for me and, and Boogs was the people that were in it. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. if you, you guys share the same values, they're cool to hang with, they're respectful to you. There's someone that you can call a friend, then then you can definitely move towards that. But if it's, if you find for any sure. flags or anything about someone being fake, hell no, don't do it. In my opinion. We're actually going to the, the wedding today that we're going to is a frat brother's wedding. Yeah. Like that, a, a that got us wedding. into. Dude, my so, dentist I mean, is, is our frat brother. That oh, our dentist, bro, hooks, he hooks me up. Like, chat, I'm telling you. Okay, so like, so we went through the process. And, and, and for us, again, I, I said, you know, the, the pledging, you know, it was tough at times. We were young guys, right? We didn't, uh, but we, we, we did it. And after six months, we joined the fraternity. But a lot of things that it taught us was, you know, and even to this day, I think about like, you know, Boogs was president. I was social chair, you know, for a long period of time. And, you know, it helps you kind of really understand a hierarchy and understand how to like manage, in a way, manage a business and, and develop relationships. Um, yeah. And that's how we took it, right? Like, I think for me, what was cool being a social chair is that we always social with sororities that were like of Asian descent, right? It was like, it was SOPIs, it was KDFIs. Um, Kappas, right? They're all like it was a Filipino, all international, Asian. But then, I I broke the barrier and I st- well we had lambdas too already set up, but yeah, but I set up the ones with S O N, yeah, oh L S G S I think are called no L S G S and then the, 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 it was the purple ones and then there was the it was like other ones there were Sunnis the the um uh, the the next one too the ES Rose ES Rose were home cool the road dogs yes the road dogs yeah those are those are my homies shout out to ES Rose the yes. homies so like it was cool like you know so like not only did the fraternity that allowed me to do that in Boogs but at the same time like we met so many people like through that process bro like college was more fun because of the org I felt like. Uh, because it allowed us so many different connections throughout the entire campus. Um, yeah. But you got it. But I'm going to tell you right now, th- there is a con, though. The social life does get lit. But you got school was rough, though, because I'd be waking up like at 11, bro, and I'd be like, oh, I missed two of my classes already. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> bro, I, I, it was uh, bad, chat. Like, I, it could have it it uh, went worse, but I, I, I think I failed anthropology or something like that. I don't know why I took that class, but like, yeah. It was, no, it was a, so, Mim 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 is asking, would you say joining a frat is more of an experience thing? I think it is. I think it enhances yeah. the the college experience. A lot of people, I know a lot of people that went to college and like did the four years, got their good grades and dipped out, right? And that was like their purpose to go to college, and that's fine. Like you can do that. Um, but if you want college to be more of like an actual experience, and like when you go out, people know who you are, and it's just more of like an inviting like. Are like it just makes the whole city like your city, because uh, you're gonna know people everywhere, which yeah. is which was really cool, and uh, I thought that was really exciting. And like some of the events that we did, you guys know I used to we used to sponsor like club events and like uh, the Kings game. Fuck the Kings for beating the Warriors yesterday, by the way. I know that was rough. Um, but um, stuff like that, it just makes like life outside of school uh, more fun. It made it more fun for us. And yeah, there's always something to do. Like always something to do. Always something to do. Snow asked, uh, "Have you had any problems with other frats in the past?" We did. So what? We did. So when we got when we first got into the frat, so after we played, we were in six months. They started telling us about all these beefs that they had with fucking with. with I'm not gonna say any any names, right? But certain uh, certain call, organizations. Oh yeah, fuck those guys. <laughs> um, 
That was, I think, I think I probably that was the only org that we didn't squash that you and I didn't squash the beef with. Yeah, the lambdas. Is that safe cool to with. say? Yeah, that's safe to say. We're yeah. cool. We're cool with lambdas. We're, we're cool with like everyone else. Like we just we didn't we didn't want any problems with anybody. Well, one because one of our frat brother, an older frat brother, like after we got in, he ran like a lot of club events. So that's why how me and Redline got into it. Um, so when, when we crossed into the fraternity, he asked us, he was like, Hey, do you want to make some money? And uh, as a college kid, you're like, shit, we're yeah, waiters. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we're like, hell yeah. Like what kind of money are you talking about? And it was club events and we got paid off of the, either, either we're getting paid off of the bar tab, like how many people showed up and paid for drinks. And we got a percentage of the bar tab or we got a cut of the ticket sale. So obviously we wanted to, we wanted to fucking pack the fucking club. Cause the more people that came, the more yeah. money we took home. Yeah. And this, this wasn't like fraternity money. This was, was like our, our money. money. Yeah, <laughs> this was our money. So we we kind of we try to squash all the beasts with the other frats just so that we can have like lit ass parties and and then we got known for that. We got known for throwing dope ass parties and yeah, um, being like the the social the social aspect out in the sack for that short period of time. It was yeah. sick. Yeah, again, again, it's all it's all based on how how you guys you know take the experience, right? Again, like you got to make sure you just surround people, surround yourself with people that you feel like you can relate to and have fun with, and any red flags you balance. But every org is going to be different. Every whoever whoever leads the org is going to be different. So you know, but our, our time we were we were fortunate enough to be a part of something that you know wasn't a good place um, for us. And and again, I'm telling you guys right now, like us joining the org definitely has brought a lot of pros into our lives um over the long run like i don't know where i would be without the or like what do i have done i could have been just going to school back and forth and just kind of doing whatever hang out with certain people x amount of time and that was it but yeah i definitely had a, a fucking blast um being in the org you know like I, I, a would lot you, of our friends my friend my closest friends are in the org yeah same would, would you say that fast forward 16 years later Fuck. Right. That's, that's a long time. 16 years later, like what part of. Did you meet Miss Redline in the fret? Did you? No, 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 no I, met, I met her because of it, though, because her best friend dated someone in the fret. And then that's, that's who you remember, Steph, Stephanie, Steph, the flight attendant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, her ex-boyfriend is a JP. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that's how I met Steph, and then I saw, and then because of Steph, Steph obviously invited you know my wife to Got to it. a rose party in San Francisco, and then that's how I met my wife. Got it. Oh man, I didn't even know that story. Yeah, that's so crazy. Expo ten, the my, my or the org is the one that got me to meet my wife today. That's dope. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's. Fast forward sixteen years, like what? What is it to you now? Like what? What is what is the frat to you now? I I feel like the frat to me now, I, like ours or just in general, like the as an or like in general as an organization, like me being an adult, semi an adult now my age. Like what do you mean? Semi adult? The fuck you're old, bro. Hey, stop it. I'm not, I'm not old. We're, I'm, we're old, bro. I I not old. <laughs> but 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 today I still feel like uh I feel like. It's, I don't think the uh, an org is for everybody, and I feel like it's up to the individual to make an experience. And I think that it could be it's a really good it's a really good resource for you to have if you're willing to commit to it and really take on the experience. That's good. That's pretty cool. You know, it's because it's all dependent on the person. So for me, fast forward sixteen years. So when we were when we were pledging and we were like in it in it like we just crossed, there was a bunch of old guys that came back like a lot. Like, uh, so our our uh, our org, so that you guys know, we number every individual, right? So everyone has a number, um, and it becomes like your number forever, right? And in history, uh, for for example, like What's my red number? is two eighty seven, two eighty seven. I'm I'm two ninety, right? And um, when we were when we were pledging, there was like ones and twos and like double digits like coming out, and fast forward sixteen years. Like we still get the invites. We still get the invites from like the active uh from the active kids that are like 18, 19, like hey, 287, 290, you trying to come out. And I'm like, man, like that's flattering. Like that's cool that y'all think like we would come out, but fuck. But we're hell old. no, <laughs> I'm hella old, bro. I'm not trying to come out with that shit. <laughs> and like and then but the option is always there. Because yeah. I know I know I know two eighty eight and two eighty nine go. 
Oh I know, I know they go. Oh my and that's God. like, <laughs> it's just like, if you want like a random, like stroll back memory lane, like you're always welcome back. And I think that's cool. Like how it, it's always an option to like jump back in, like whenever you feel like, and you're still, you're still there. Like you're still there, like nothing left. Bro, it's been 16 years and that's crazy. And I could always get my house cleaned. You know what I'm saying? If I really wanted to, they could always come by. Oh, but they probably do a shit My job, wife, though. my wife hates that shit. So when we... <laughs> When we moved out and oh, you got obviously them to come we, had, out? we had we had a kid, we had a kid, right? So you guys know, right? I left college, but when I became a dad, so that I can work. But um, I was like, man, I was so tired. I didn't want to clean the house, so I made the phone call. Right? I was like, <laughs> come on, come on, hey, clean the house. Man, I remember my wife came home from like the groceries, and she was just like, "Who the fuck are all these fucking people?" Why the fuck are they all wearing black? <laughs> she was like, get get them the were... fuck out of my house. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, I remember too when me and my ex were, were cleaning, like we were moving. We used the we used the pledges to come empty the house and she <laughs> felt so bad. Like she's like, yeah. I'm gonna buy the food. I'm like, fuck that, don't buy them food. She's like, she bought hella pizza, and she was like, the guys were, they were hella struggling to carry the bed. She was trying to help them. I'm like, let them do it. They got this. They got this. Let them learn. My wife too. My wife was like, can we get them water? Like they got water in their bags. So don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about <laughs> it. And then me and Boo just sitting on the couch, just, just like watching TV or something like that. No, they're fine. They're fine. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So that that was funny. Oh, I want to talk about. I want to talk about cons. Is there any negative that you feel? Are associated with being in a frat. Um, I I I, that, I know I know mine. I know uh, mine. So I I think yeah. Now you know we're adults now, right? So like looking back at our younger days, like even though there were so many good things, there are cons as well to being <clears> in org. Again, this is just from our personal experiences in the org that we were in. Um, yes, let's see the bad side. Man, man, got it. Let's see it. So like to be to be fair, like. The pledging process, I, I feel like again, it's it, like like Boog said, it's a mental game, right? And I think the my my concerns now is that if you don't have like people to hold other people accountable in those positions of you know of pledging other kids, I mean these are kids pledging kids, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That could be a really big risk, and I think there's a con to that because some people can take it overboard of. You know, not really understanding like you know what's going too far and again i'm not saying that we we did like we made them drink gasoline or anything like that that, that was never crazy like that but like <laughs> no nothing you know, like that academics is really important especially when you're going to college and i think that if you don't balance it i feel like a lot of people have gone down the wrong way in terms of academics what, at your school what movie was that that came out about pledging it wasn't it wasn't like burning burning something the burning sands burning sand never seen it I've seen, you do watch it Watch it. It's it's like a full on movie about pledging, and then at the end, uh, the pledge dies. Again, yeah, that's crazy. See, see, yeah, so that's that. That's to me. <laughs> it, it, it's fortunate for us nothing ever happened. I know Robert said earlier that yeah. some of the Philippines died, but that definitely yeah. a thing. Um, Again, you gotta you gotta pick your org. Your homework. Pick your yeah, org. Yeah, pick your org. I don't know if it's for you. So the negative thing for me about being in an organization. Um, was everybody fucking knows your business, bro? Everybody fucking knows oh, your business. Yeah. Oh my god! So I dated so my girl at the time. She <laughs> she pledged the same year we did, and she got into a sorority. And every time we had an argument, there, every time that there was oh somebody was looking at you, or if I was like in a. So remember, I was the president of a fraternity, right? So I was the president. So I would always like be talking to people, getting people's numbers or information to share like ideas on how we can like do things across the campus or whatever. And man, I remember like several times I'd be getting somebody's phone number. And then like four minutes later, I'm getting a call like, Who, why are you getting some girl's phone number? And da -da -da, like, what the fuck? Like word traveled so fast. Like you couldn't, I couldn't do shit without like everybody knowing like what I was doing and like, so when I when I finally broke up with her, I told I told myself, yo, I'm not I'm not gonna date anybody in a, in a sorority. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, that that but, that's uh, tough. I and I never dated. I never had a girlfriend in a sorority. You better put hard quotes on that shit, bro. <laughs> I, I never, you were very friendly. Yeah, but, I, but I never. I, but I never had a girlfriend that was in a sorority. I 
Public breakups? No, no, hold on. The public breakup. So when I broke up with her, man, there were some ones that came out of nowhere. Like that I I didn't even talk to and they were just like, Oh, you're single. Like they were shooting their shot. And it was just Ooh, like you had fun. You bro. Had- I mean, I had I, I'm not gonna I had fun. It was just weird. It was weird at first, like because it wasn't a public breakup. Like it wasn't Everybody it wasn't knew like, though, bro, when it happened. Of course, I mean, I know everybody, everybody knew. Everybody knew. knew, bro. But like it wasn't like we were in the middle of school and we we're just like, fuck you, I'm never gonna with you ever again. Like it wasn't like a crazy public breakup. Like we did it behind closed doors, you know what I mean? But everybody knew and like there was there was so many like shooting their shot. Like I felt hella weird. <laughs> it was kind of bro. Bro, I, I cause, wait, I think I had a girlfriend the entire time, but I still had fun. And which is not a good thing to do, guys, by the way. But that's why I put that's why I put the quotes around the girlfriend in a sorority. Like shut your yeah, ass. No, no, I no, I meant like I never dated someone <laughs> that was part of an organization. That's what I meant. Like in terms of or boyfriend, girlfriend. I, I slept with a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? But Yeah. I didn't Yeah, you did. Didn't have like, hell, this is my girlfriend who's part of an order. Oh, that's a lie. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? That's a lie. In and out. In and out. She was a uh she no? was a <laughs> She was in an accounting frat. She oh my in... god, that does not count as a frater <laughs> sorority. Stop it. It does. No, they it had doesn't. letters. Stop it. No, they did it. No, they did it. Oh my god, stop it. It was an accounting frat. They were they were a co-ed accounting frat, right? It was something like that. Yes, it was. But now I remember. Yeah, no, no, that does not count, bro. That does not count. That counts, bro. No, ch- don't don't chat. don't degrade her letters, in, bro. In a, don't a, degrade her letters. Bro. An accountant sorority is a co-ed fraternity does not count, bro. Stop it. Oh, Come God. on! They did not go through. What don't we talk had to go now. Through. God, they had to do numbers. They had like they probably had like balanced like accounting sheets and shit. Like it must have been hard. They had to do <laughs> balanced spreadsheets to pass their organization. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, chat. That was uh, yeah. So at the end of the day, I, I for me personally, I think joining the frat was definitely worth it for me. Because I want to, like, look at me and Boogs have been together for 16 years. You know, we've been through so many chapters in each other's lives. You know, I mean, he's been, he was my wedding. You know what I'm saying? I, I was there for his firstborn. Like, be, like, bro, that, like, there's so many different things. We've been in so many yeah. jobs together. Um, like, and, and again, we're going to a brother's wedding. That's going to be later on today. Um, and yeah. then we're going to a brother's daughter's birthday tomorrow. Like, it's just, you know, there's, just, there's so many things that, you know, that made positives in my life that definitely I would, I would say is worth it. So I don't know. What do you think, Boogs? I think, I mean, it's so generic. And I just remember like going to info nights and being the one talking about the work and like the, the elevator pitch was always, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. Uh, and I think yeah. that's still true. I think that's still true. Like to this day, like fast forward 16 years, it's like, if you want someone to hang out with, like you're never alone. Like we're never alone. There's always something that we can do or someone that we can call. Um, but you have to make the effort. Yeah. And the more effort that you put into it, the more that people will put in effort in you as well. So um I, I think what what you were saying about like picking the right one, just know that like Greek life isn't for everybody. And that's okay. You know what I mean? And you, you have to be okay with that. And if you find one that you feel like fits like what you're looking for as far as like where you're at in your life, then great. If not, fuck it. Like, you know, yeah, it's not you'll like be a necessity. All right. you'll, you'll be all right yeah. no matter what the situation is. You just got to make sure that it's the right fit. Like, that, again, I can fuck with these guys. So as you know, bro, I have a 12-year-old, a 10-year-old, and a 7-year-old. And a 2-year-old. I have three boys. Three boys. Yeah. Three boys. And I hope they all join. I- Really? I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I told I was telling my wife. My wife does not want them to join. She's like, "Fuck that! That's so stupid." But I told them like on the side, like, yeah, my wife talks so much shit on it too. She's like, "Oh, no, you no," like because we we have, yeah. we have a chant. So we have in our or we have a chant that we always say like every time we go like we we say our letters we go, who 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 we basically say that right and then every time she she does it she always mocks it going, who 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 yeah you know you know like she'll just talk hell of shit. She doesn't understand, but like if if I had a if 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 I had a son or daughter, it's first off I had a son. If you wanted to join, sure, whatever, right? You know, do what you got to do. You know, make sure it's the right fit, whatever. But then the thing is, if you had a daughter, I'm sorry, if your daughter, I said if you had a daughter, if your daughter goes, <laughs> Dad, yeah, I, I 
I'm gonna join a sorority. I want to join a sorority. I fuck, fuck that. <laughs> fuck that. That's stupid. <laughs> stay away. Stay. Stay away. Fuck that. I put my dad voice on. Fuck that. Fuck that. Don't touch that. Don't do it. So, so like, fuck that. Are you worried do about like? Are you just worried about like guys like me and you up like saying hi to you, like, hey, welcome to the sorority. Let's have a social. <laughs> That's what you're worried about. Well, you're worried about uh, another redliner booze come up to your daughter, huh? I think so, bro. You know what? And it's different. I never thought I would have to do, like, I would have to be a parent to a girl, right? Because we, we had three boys, and we thought I thought we were done. I didn't think we were going to have any more. So now that my, my daughter's turning two, like, there's, like, a lot of things that you got to do. It's so true. I fucking read this on a meme somewhere. It was like, if you have a son, you have to worry about one dick. Like, your son's dick, right? You got to worry about where he puts his dick. If you have a daughter, you got to worry about all the fucking dicks. <laughs> all just, the fucking dicks. I like, just, fuck. I just, <laughs> oh, shit. Isn't that a good... I thought that's I was dying a, when I read that. that <laughs> that's a really good... That's a really good... That's a really good meme right there. I'm telling you, that shit got me. I was dead. I was like, fuck, it's true. I do have to. That's why I stay strapped. Everyone in the chat, I stay strapped. I got a daughter. I'm yeah, ready. He does, you know. <laughs> he, he's licensed. He's a licensed carrier, so we're fine. Licensed, licensed carrier. I'm good to go. Um, Bring him on. <laughs> dude, I, like, when prom, like, when first date happens or prom, like, prom night, you got to call me and be like, hey, date's coming to pick her up prom Saturday. I'm going to fucking be there. Bro. Oh, can we do that? Oh, can, can we, we do, do that? like, the I bad wanna... boys thing? Where, like, yes. they open the door, and then we both have guns. And be like, oh, what's up, man? What you need? What are you here for? Who's this motherfucker? Uh, fuck, what, what you want? Wait, what, how old are you, 40? You look, you look, oh, mother, yeah. you look motherfucking look 40, 40 years old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy. What is that? He's a Will Smith. He's, you, you ever make love to a man? Yeah. You, you want, want to? to? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> that shit have you. No, that shit no have sir. You no, sir. Uh, no. How, how did you do research on which frat to join? It was basically... Like, again, there's no, like, online research that we did. It was more of just go to their inf info night is a night where people can come to join and learn more about the fraternity. And you can talk oh, to the on, members. So Wait, that's what, how before, we did. Before, before info night, meant, meant, there's something, a whole campus-wide called Rush Week. Yeah. Uh, there's a whole week where all the fraternities and sororities, they pretty much have, like, their own. It, it, think of, like, think of like, uh, like a food truck aisle, right? <laughs> like, how there's hella fucking food trucks. There's just fucking hella booths of like different orgs. Food truck and... aisle, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like that, right? Don't yeah. it look like that? Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, 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 yeah. Like... That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you just go and you just go shopping, bro. Like you I think the biggest thing for us when we were when we had rush week and we wanted like people to join the org, we were just looking for real people. Like the they weren't like, Oh, I need friends and like like what the fuck? Like, all right, we can be your friend for a little bit. But we just wanted like real people, people that we wanted to hang out with and thought that like they, you know, they'd be cool. And so you'd be able to just kind of interact with people on campus during the rush week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you'll be able to see like where, where you feel like you would fit in the most. And make sure to so ask we're questions Filipi too. We're a Filipi Filipino based fraternity, but we had hella, we were hella white guys yeah, trying to get in our Yeah. Friends. Yeah. Cause they liked Asian girls. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I pretty, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's why they did it, you know? Hey, is it is it too late? Is it too late for uh for Bunny to join? We should get Bunny some letters. Dude, it, <laughs> dude I, Bunny would not last in a fraternity. I don't think he would do it. I don't think he would do the process. I think he would go through it just to get some ABGs. I think you know what I'm saying? I think Bunny can get Asian it. With, baby girl. I think Bunny can get it without it. Like fact, like, trust me, I think he can get it without it. Like I truly <laughs> think he can. That's funny. God, yeah. So Mimit, so our advice to you, though, brother, is just go to the go to the rush week. Kind of look around, ask questions, you know, like, and be real. Again, don't be embarrassed or intimidated by any of these fuckers. You'd be like, hey, what's up? You know, my yeah. name is, my name is Mint Mint, whatever you want to say. You know, it's like, you know, I'm interested. Like, can you tell me more about your frat? And then you, you'll know then if, it's, if it makes sense, if they're fucking fake or they're, and you'll find frats who think they're hella hard and shit. Like, they'll be in the front, like, hella intimidating, like, trying to be hella cool. Like, hella, they're hella hard asses. Yeah. yeah, then fuck them. You know what I'm saying? Like, if someone's welcoming and say, what's up to you? Like, hey, you want no more information? Like, be cool. Like, that's that's your first initial step to really understanding if someone you want to join. Um, and then go from there. And ask questions about things that, remember, make sure that they meet your interests or things that you want to do in college. Meaning, do you want to be more social? Do you want to have connections at the end of college? Like, what does that look like? You know? Like, yeah. have a plan.
but but that's the best way for you to do your research. Yeah, just go talk to people. I agree. If if like going to school and like getting good grades is something that you want to do too. Like my wife thinks like joining her friend like fucked up my college career as far as like academic wise. I did that myself. Yeah, you, you got, know what I'm saying? You like, got her pregnant. That's what you I did. chose. That you I, exactly. Yeah. Like, I chose the, the things I chose. But I know like a lot of frat brothers are frat brothers that are like 4.0 fucking geniuses that are hella smart, making hella money. Yeah. Well, one of our one of our frat bros fucking started a, a cannabis like biotech firm in San Diego. Like yep. it's fucking crazy. Yep. And uh, <laughs> so it's just like it's crazy like what you can do. Uh, with the resources you have, you just gotta use them to whatever you want. Yeah, right? have, like let it yeah, let it adapt to you. We had brothers everywhere, dude. Like I had a brother like who worked at like the unemployment office when I took a like a leave of absence for work. He literally processed my application for me. You know what I'm saying? There's so many things that like that the org did for me, like through different like avenues of like connections. So like it's definitely something that has been super beneficial for me. It is. It is crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. Maybe it, it again. It's 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 all about how it's what you put into it, right? And 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 the effort that you put into it to to make an experience of your own. Definitely worth it. Yeah. In my in my opinion, it was worth it for me. I guess it was worth it. Yeah, why? Uh, yeah. Hey, you know it was, bro. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't, why are we going to this org? You know, we're going to a fucking we're just going to a frat party at five o'clock. That, that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> I guarantee that's what it's gonna be like, bro. He, this guy that we're going to his wedding, he's like so about like this was his life. He was president the also was like before you life. were. He was president before you were. Oh, the, yeah, the order. Yeah. Um, he he's very proud. And and chat this this guy we're going to. He's a I think he's a correctional officer in a prison now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you feel you're protected to other friends? What what do you mean? Like I no one else is gonna mess with us. Oh thing? yeah, for sure. Oh, bro. Bro, it was, so like, it was like a mini I, gang, bro. You guys know, you guys know, I think, I don't know if Robert, you know, but I, I tell everyone my college nickname was Henny Hole, right? And it was because I would always get fucked up whenever we'd go out and I would just want to fight all the time. <laughs> and you just felt hella like confident, like knowing like your frat yeah, was like you're behind drunk. you. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, be like, I'd be like, boo, stop. You're like, man, fuck him. I'm like, bro, the guy works here. He, he has to talk to you. <laughs> The guy's just asking for oh, your order. Oh, shit. Yeah. That was funny. Dude, like, ch chat, ch funny. chat, we were, <laughs> chat, we were literally in line, like, in the VIP line at, at a club, and then this, in this, we, we would always pre, pre-game, like, in, at, my, at my spot or his spot, or in the trunk of a car, we would have a bottle of Hennessy, and we'd be just pouring shots of Hennessy, like, we'd pour, like, fat shots, and this guy would oh, be like, yeah. Boogs would be like, I'm hella drunk already, bro. I'm like, oh, we're fucked. <laughs> And then we literally go to the line, and this guy was like, you know, the bouncers in the front, like holding us back. He goes, "What the fuck is this guy talking me for? Let us in, bro! Like we're VIP, bro! I'm like, D, he's just doing his job, dude. Like, man, fuck that guy, fuck that guy. He'd be so, so loud. We'd have that call, right? We'd be like, hey, yo, you know, and like a bunch of motherfuckers would just like hit the chant like at the same time, and like your confidence level to fight oh, this dude, fucking like Sky six. six this six six bouncer, it's like I'm about to fuck you up, bro. <laughs> it more like, oh man, yeah, yeah. But Robert, yes, the we we roll like deep, like twenty thirty people, like it. We roll deep, man. It, it was like a sense of family, like for sure, like when you're together. Yeah. So, uh, it, yeah, for us specifically, we we had a really good relationship with our other brothers, and we still to this day. To this day. Yeah, bro. Hour by super fast, man. Look at us, dude. Oh my gosh, chat. This is our first hey, episode wanna... on the channel. Shout out to the chat. You guys are great. Again, this channel wouldn't wouldn't be what it is without you guys. We actually really, I really enjoy talking to you guys. Hope you guys feel the same. So, uh, if there's anything that you guys want to talk about, like topics or anything like that, that you want me and Redline to hit, let us know. We'd be happy to. Yeah, we'd be happy to hit it up and. Uh, we're here for you guys, so whatever you guys want to talk about. And I really hope that you guys are really enjoying these these type of podcasts. I know me, you guys know me from the from a from a different, completely different, you know, genre. But I, these are these are the kind of things that I kind of want to tailor my content towards towards the towards the future, especially with Boogs. Um, I feel like we have so much, so many different experiences. And wait, you have a dog? A fucking dog keeps like licking my leg, bro. Oh, is, God, is, is that a hug? It's a pug. It's a pug named Bob. What's up, Bob? What's up, Bob? Wait, your dog's name is Bob? <laughs> Bob. 
Why? What's wrong with that? What's fucked up. <laughs> Don't be a hater. Just Bob? <laughs> just Bob. It's just Wait, B.O.B. That's it. When did you get a dog? Uh, we got him December. We got him in or November. December or November. Oh, it's only been a few. It's only been like five months. Yeah, he's he's still a puppy, bro. He's only like six months. Oh, he's a rescue. He's over here like licking the shit out of my leg. No, like uh, we of just course. of course we just randomly drove out to like Fresno and picked him up. It was crazy. <laughs> Name is Bob. Next episode, each of you tell a story about the other that they don't want to be told. Oh, that's a good one, Lambo. Do I have one? I have a oh, lot of yours, but I don't know if I want to say it publicly. Do I have some of yours that are not already public? <laughs> oh, I do. I do. Give me a hint. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you about a hint and you tell me mine. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fucked up. This one's actually a fucked up story that I don't, I don't even that know. I, if I, I was fucked up? No, not you, but you're... <laughs> Um, so I don't know how to even phrase it without just like giving it away. Um, <laughs> you called me in the middle of the night and told me something happened. And in the morning I called you back and I was like, I know that's a lie. <laughs> what really happened? I can't remember. You were, you were doggy sitting. Oh, you were no. <laughs> That was a fucked up story. That, was a, that one's a fucked up story. And that wasn't even your fault. That wasn't even your fault, but it's still on you. It has to be, it's obviously, it's on you. Uh, I only thought of it because my dog, Bob, over here just fucking jumped up. So I. I... Uh, yeah, chat. Maybe we can do that for next episode. Oh my God. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's fucked, a story. fucked up story. And I pray to God oh, this person really. never watched the episode ever. Ever. I don't know if we should talk about it. I think that's too much to have on the internet. Is it though? We can use code names. I mean, I, I'm attached. That's why I'm attached to dogs. Like yeah. my big ass pug. Yeah, I, I I have one for you. What's more expensive, Hulk life or R O K life? Oh, dude, uh, I, dude, I say R O K life. R O K life for sure. R O K life for sure. X, hundred percent. But we can definitely talk about that. <laughs> and I think a a gram here is like eighty, and then an eight ball is like one eighty or something like that. Do you see that? Do you ever see that uh, thing on TikTok where like the little kid is like, "Mom, how much is an eighth? And the mom is like, "I don't know, like forty bucks." Oh, and the probably, daughter was like, "No, three. I'm doing, I'm doing fractions." <laughs> it's just, it was hella funny. Wait, there's a TikTok Bye. of that saying, "Mom, how much is an eighth? I don't know, forty dollars." Yeah. She goes, "No fractions." Oh, I'm doing fractions. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> oh. And then the dad, and then the dad in the background, like I'll give it to you for thirty. Like, <laughs> <it's hell fun. laughs> All right, chat. I, we hit our we hit our hour. Uh, make sure to subscribe and like the stream. We would really appreciate it. We're gonna keep these going every single week. Next topic, I think, might be Lambos, but we'll we'll let you guys know. But we're yeah, trying to grow this channel to a thousand subscribers. Uh, so we appreciate you guys' support. Make sure to like and subscribe. And again. Any additional topics you guys want to talk about, put it in the comment section when this video posts. We really appreciate it. Other yes, than that, man, anything from you, Boogs? That's it. We appreciate you guys. Take it easy. We'll see you guys next week. Much love, baby. And Mitt, Mitt good luck, man. Going to college, man. And if you have any questions, you can hit us up. We'll definitely support you, man. All right, check it out. For sure. Later, chat. Later. Peace.